Hello, welcome, welcome back. If if this is the the first time you're tuning in today, then welcome. Uh, if this is the second time you're tuning in or the fourth time you're tuning in, then also welcome. Um, for those who are unaware, we've had some issues with the stream earlier today. We're gonna try and pick up. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same preamble, um, but hopefully it refuses to reconnect and it breaks the entire stream. So if that happens, there's one setting I can change. Um, I'm gonna end, so just so you're aware, if it happens, I'll end the stream, fix the setting, and then restart it immediately because I really wanna do this topic. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hope, hopefully we can get through this without it, it breaking again because that's kinda of losing my mind, guys. Kinda of losing it. Anyway, so as we were. So the I'm gonna I'm gonna give the short version because I've now given this this monologue like four times, so <laughs> stop being fun. Um, basically the, the long and the short of this, it's plant viruses are bastards. They cause like sixty billion dollars worth of crop damage per year. Um, it like decimates fields. Like when, once and one of the issues with plant viruses is unlike animal viruses where it's like a big deal when it jumps between species plant viruses work in most plants uh so once it so it, it they're very it's very easy for them to jump species and just cause huge amounts of damage um so be that as it may uh, unfortunately it seems as though my plants have gotten sick or two of them anyways i've isolated the ones that seem to be infected um and admittedly Maybe it's a weird nutrient deficiency and it's just presenting in a really strange way, but most likely it seems like a virus. So I ended up sending uh, a picture of my plants to uh, a friend of mine who is like a plant biologist. Um, and I was like, hey, does this look weird to you? And he's like, my condolences. I'm like, what do you mean my condolences? Um, so yeah, basically it looks like some sort of virus. So uh, plants are a little weird in that they have a very different immune system to the way that we picture immune systems in animals. So there's no T cells, there's no like immune cells. Um, their way of dealing with pests and, and viruses and this sort of thing is um, with uh, like bacteria or insects or something, they'll just try and like kill off um, that leaf or, or you know that part of the plant that's infected. Um, but for viruses, they mostly use, um, they have a whole separate set of like internal, like each cell has a way of dealing with viruses. Um, and so basically the way that you make a vaccine is you sort of hijack that system and try and, uh, make it, uh, work. Um, like, and, and basically try and set that system off essentially, um, which, you know, Come on, man, my, I hate windows. I hate windows so much. I'm like, I would like to move this window to the top of the page. It's like, what, you want it full screen? No. Um, anyways, um, and so anyway, so all, all these, these issues with plants, especially with crops, are especially bad because we grow massive fields of monocultures. So um, that can be just devastating to, to crops and stuff, which really, really sucks. Um, Anyways, so um, let's just kind of hop into this and just, you know, I don't know, just hope it doesn't crash again. Um, um, it seems like we've actually got good signal, so hopefully we're good. Um, yeah, anyways, so I'm going to set this to uh, view mode, and now we can get into this. Um, that wasn't supposed to be open. Okay, so a um, couple of things right off the right, right off the bat. Oh, it seems that my I'm I seem to be missing a thing. All right, well I gotta I gotta fix this. Give me a second. Sorry, I'm a turnip. Um, uh, shit, how do I do this without? Okay, if I do that, then I should be able to click this. Okay, yeah, sorry, this is just gonna take me one second to fix. I don't know why. Um, it's not capturing a my thing so I'm just do this uh, sorry this will just take one second I it managed to delete my uh, my webcam from the uh, the thing why isn't it seeing the integrated camera 
Oh, for fuck's sake. Why? <laughs> I hate Streamlabs so much. This is just, it's just the worst. Um, this really should be an easy fix, but for whatever reason, it is just not, just not cooperating. Ooh, that worked. Okay. Should be able to click that now. Should be able to put that there. Now I need a tiny, tiny me. Okay, cool. That should fix it. I think we're good. Um, good. Yay. Okay, it's fixed. Fuck. Sorry, guys. This is... I'm just as frustrated as you are. Anyways, um, cool. I think I fixed it. We should be good. Now we can actually get into it. So, a um, couple of things off the bat, um, just to get them out of the way. Um, the donation goal that you see is for the Spider Silk project, which is moving forward, but um, there have been a couple snags, and <laughs> the way that you fix snags in biology is unfortunately with money. Uh, so, that's the, so all the donations are going to be going towards um, moving that project along. Um, there'll be an update video, hopefully by the end of the month, um, just kind of talking about the, the progress that we've made, because we have actually made a lot of progress. Like, we're very, we're, in theory, we're actually very close, um, and I think I've solved some of the, uh, like, base issues, but we'll... Uh, it's, it's going to take a little bit more to get it to the point where we're actually making silk, but there's a really easy way to fix that problem. Um, so the, the uh, donations is for uh, sorting that out. Okie dokie. Um, so moving on, um, I have actually gotten around to updating the GitHub. So now all of the projects that we've talked about thus far are in here. So if you're interested in any of the stuff that we've done thus far um, on any of these streams, it's all in here. Um, so feel free to check that out and enjoy. Okay, so now the, the thing, there's, there's basically three, two or three things that we need to do. First, it, we're going to talk about how you even figure out which virus um, is affecting your plants. Then we're going to talk about how you make a vaccine. Then we're going to end how you deliver it. And then we're going to theoretically design one. And I'm probably going to need, uh, need some of your help for that because this shit's hard. Um... Um, the qubit is still not fixed. I'm still I'm still tinkering with it. I, I got some stuff to try and fix it. It didn't fix it. So at this point, I basically have to actually like physically open up the device, check all of the stuff, um, like take some really high res pictures of the circuit, send it off to my circuit friend, who is just like a god of electronics. And so hopefully he'll be able to sort that out. Um, so anyways, uh, first things first, we're going to we're gonna look at this paper, because we're it's going to be looking at a lot of different papers today, because there's a lot of technical stuff to cover. Um, just as soon as Chrome cooperates. Cool. Um, right. Okay. So, um, the, first, I, you know what, before we, before we do that, let's, let's have a look at my plants. So this is one of the leaves from my uh, eggplant. And... As you can see, it does not look very happy at all. Um, you see all these these little these little spots. Now there is a small possibility this could be a manganese. I don't know. I don't think it's manganese. I'm I'm fairly certain that it's it's some sort of virus. Specifically, I believe it's something along the lines of a tobacco mosaic virus. Now here's some here's some pictures of what tobacco mosaic virus looks like, and you can see that it looks fairly similar. Um, the thing is, though, there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different uh, plant viruses. You know, there's there's like a top 10 sort of thing of the ones that tend to affect crops the most. But, um, I mean, here's here's a really good example. Like, it, it starts as these little dots, and then it just kind of gets progressively more fucked. Um, and and you, can, you can kind of see that there. Um, so, yeah, tobacco mosaic virus is a bastard it it ruins crops i mean here's here's a really good one i mean that looks to me um basically exactly like what's going on with my plants uh, viruses look very very different for the most part from animal viruses but what's also weird is they can theoretically jump into animals 
technically, which is weird and awful. Um, so most viruses are rod shaped, or, or sorry, not uh, most viruses. Most plant viruses tend to be rod shaped. Um, they're either very very long and flexible, or they're like short and like stubby. Um, but here, yeah, here's a good. Uh, this this is a uh, transmission electron microscope. Um, micrograph of what to tobacco mosaic virus actually looks like. These things are very tiny. Um, that you can't see them in a, in a normal microscope. You have to see them under a transmission microscope. Um, and so it's, this, it's just this long rod of proteins, and in this, like, coil of proteins uh, exists the... Uh, I believe it's... I, I want to say that it's double-stranded RNA, um, but it could also be DNA. I'm not entirely sure. Um... In, in fact, it might be RNA that gets turned into DNA, so um, it's you're able to detect it through different methods than if it was if it just uh, existed as RNA the entire time. But yeah, it's a weird it's a weird virus. Like I mean, I've done so like so I've done some viral work before, um, and I you know I'm I'm fairly familiar with them. But as viruses go, these ones are weird. They're real weird. I mean, I'm, I'm all my stuff was with uh, like animal cell lines so like i <laughs> i am new to the world of plant viruses and wow do i hate them right it's the, it's a funky looking thing and so here's the uh here's a here's a good picture uh so it's base so it is a coiled rna strand there we go that answers our question um so you can see that it's basically just the same repeating subunit that just like wraps and wraps and wraps and wraps and it sort of grabs onto the rna and just keeps it as this gigantic coil um which is just very weird it's just a very weird way of, I mean, it's efficient and it seems to work pretty well, but it's, it's very weird. Whereas if you can compare that to something like, uh, like an adenovirus, which is something that will give you like a really nasty stomach ache, it's a really bad stomach bug. Um, it tends to be these more capsid centric things. Um, oh, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so yeah, wild, very, very wild structure. Um, it's not to say that all plant viruses are like this. Some plant viruses will be more capsidy, um, and like little particles like this. And very, very rarely you'll get some that are enveloped, so they actually have like a lipid shell around them. But it's very rare. They're, it's not super, super common. It's mostly you get this rod stuff. Um, also, as you can imagine, the way that these viruses are transmitted is inherently pretty different from the way that um, animal viruses are transmitted because they're not like there's there's not like a circulatory system in the way that um, animal cells have there aren't cells moving around so getting between the different uh, cells can be very weird and very difficult um, and also plants don't move around so it's not like one plant walks up to another plant coughs on them and then you know fucks off and they both get sick um, it's it, most of the time, the virus is transmitted through another carrier. So a lot of the times this is insects. Some of the times it's humans. Um, some of the times it's through sap. So like something will eat the sap and then go and try and eat the sap of some other plant and then ends up, it ends up getting infected. Um, sometimes it's through nematodes, so like tiny little soil worms. Um, it's all sorts of different ways. I think the... But, like, just touching the plant, like, these things get all over you. So the, the actual, like, treatment for if you end up with an infected plant is you put on gloves and you pick up the entire container and you throw out everything and then you bleach the whole area. Because once it's there, like, they're viruses. They get on everything. Um, this is, there's one thing, if there's one thing that I learned from my time working in a lab that handled viruses is that it, it's like playing the floor is lava, except everything is lava. Like, they get on everything. It's it's very, very, very difficult to actually keep them contained properly, so you need, like, all kinds of extra precautions to be able to do that um, so you can handle things safely. Um, and admittedly, I was only working on, like, uh, viruses that were um, broken, so, like, they, they weren't um, infectious. They weren't... It was, the only thing I ever, I've, I've really worked with was uh, herpes, so, like, HSV, um, but never anything nasty like we're not we're not talking like an ebola lab we're, we're talking like pretty really tame stuff that doesn't tend to get in the air but like and and they're enveloped so um you know it's easy to kill them 
uh, whereas from eating those sick plants. Um, there's some papers that show that the viruses can kind of replicate in, in animal tissues um, because the promoter um, on their genes are sort of, they have like universal motifs that allow even animal cells to, to express them, but like the expression is so low um, that even if it gets into you, like there's not enough virus to really cause any damage and then your immune system pretty quickly stomps it out. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag, like technically, but not, as far as we can tell, uh, no. It's pretty wild though. So um, now that we know that, so I suspect that it's probably tobacco mosaic virus um, is the, uh, is the culprit. I mean, that was also what my, my friend suggested. He's like, yeah, it's probably tobacco mosaic virus. But the thing is, I could be wrong. Like there's literally thousands of different viruses. Um, and there's, of, of all the viruses that affect plants that we're aware of, we only really study the ones that affects crops. Like the ones that, that don't affect crops, people just don't care because it's not something, I mean, it's the same way that like there's billions and billions of different viruses. Um, but we only really tend to care about the ones that affect us and everything else is mostly ignored. So if it affects like one of our, our like farm animals or food crops or us specifically, we care, but otherwise it's, you know, there's, there's very little funding for studying things that don't affect us. Um, which is pretty wild and pretty shitty because there's all this biodiversity of stuff that we could probably learn things from, but we just don't care because they don't affect our stuff. Um, but let's have a look at some other plant viruses just so you can kind of get a bit of a, a bit of an overview of, of the ways that they can look different because they look very, very different depending on which virus it is. And so the plants behave differently. Um, so this is, this is the one I used in the thumbnail. Um, this is the tobacco etch virus. So if it's a tobacco mosaic virus, it tends to have the like white spots, but if they actually, if the spots turn brown like this, um, then it's more likely to be a tobacco etch virus. Um, there's alf also um, uh, alfalfa mosaic virus. This is, this is another really common one, um, which, you know, maybe, maybe it's this one. It's kind of hard to say. Um, so you can see it's it's a bit of a different uh, coloration pattern. The the splotches are a little bit bigger. Um, there's also uh, another one which is mild pepper virus, uh, mottle virus. Um, and so sometimes you can actually recognize, like you'll see the the fruit. Um, and so yeah, this one this one actually affects the the fruit that that ends up growing. And so you see it it ends up with these like weird, like blobby fruits um, and it doesn't affect the leaves as much um, you can see that like the, the plants will grow like they'll, they'll grow all the way to the point where you get fruit um, but it it ruins the the crops a little bit I mean a because it looks gross um, but also B like it, it is actually damaging the health of the plant um, but it, it's they call it mild because presumably it doesn't actually kill the plant whereas something like tobacco mosaic virus actually like the plant dies um, especially something like, um, like the tobacco etch virus where it's like, it's, it's blowing holes in the leaves. Like the leaves aren't functioning properly anymore. Um, and there's, so there's different ways of actually detecting these. So of course you look at the, the visual patterns and the, the ways that things look. Um, so, you know, you, you look at like, okay, what does the leaf look, uh, look like? So you go, you know, tobacco mosaic virus leaf. You're like, yeah, you know, that that's pretty close. But, like, just looking at it isn't enough to tell you exactly what it is. And, again, normally, um, if it's something where, you know, you're growing monocultures and you're growing, like, actual crops, then you just burn the fields. Like, you, you don't you don't usually try and treat them. Normally, there's no treatment because, I, I mean, this is something that we're experiencing firsthand, which is if we don't have a vaccine for something... Uh, <laughs> You gotta isolate it, and the only way to isolate a whole field of plants is to light them on fire um, to prevent things from spreading. So, like, this is a problem, especially with bananas. And with bananas, it's not a virus, it's a fungus. Um, but if a, if a banana crop shows signs of being infected with um, the type of... I think it's a type of blight. It, either way, it's a type of fungus. But um, if, if you see the fungus on the bananas, you burn the entire crop. Um, because if it spreads, it will take out your entire crop and your business is dead. Um, so it's better to light a field on fire than it is to let it spread and then 
Because if it does, like, you could take out every banana in an entire country um, if it started spreading around, which is what actually... So the reason that we've got the type of banana that we have today is because this actually happened. Um, originally, we used to eat uh, what's called the Gros Michel banana, which technically you can still get. It's just very difficult because um, very few people grow them. But the Gros Michel banana um, w was much closer to what like artificial banana flavor tastes like. Um, but yeah, this, this species of fungus wiped out the entire, like, crop of Gros Michel, and so now there's only very few growers who even have any of the plants. Um, and now the Cavendish, which is the species of banana that, or the variety of banana that we, we eat currently, is now starting to have this same problem, where this fungus has now adapted to the new kind of banana, and since the kind of banana we grow currently are all, every banana you've ever eaten, unless you've eaten a species other than the Cavendish, um, are all genetically identical. They're the same banana. Um, so yeah, it, it like, but so now if, if a banana crop seems to be infected, they burn the entire field because otherwise it will take out every single banana that you will eat. And then we've got to switch to a new banana species. And that's a problem because most of them are not super great. Um, or they're full of seeds, and, you know, that's a harder sell, but if that's the only thing you got, people will adapt. But yeah, so anyways, so now we've, now we know that, now we know a little bit about viruses. There's all kinds of different ones. So, how do you actually detect them? Well, if you had access to, like, a full lab and, like, the ability to do all kinds of different tests, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. But I'm working with what I've got, which is very limited lab, like, very, very limited uh, materials and reagents and equipment. So really the only test that I can actually run is PCR. So PCR, I've done a whole video on PCR. If you don't know what it is or how it works, I'd highly suggest uh, like giving that a watch. You know, it's got all nice animations and stuff. Um, but the, the long and the short of it is basically what PCR lets you do is if a certain um, piece of DNA is present in the reaction, you end up with millions and millions, it, it basically, the, the reaction makes millions of copies of that one little fragment of DNA to the point where you can actually, like, you'll get a band on a gel. Um, so, actually, you know what? I can show this to you on Instagram. Um, so, if we go over to Instagram and we look at some of the photos that I've been posting. So here, for example, this is this is an example of the results of a PCR reaction. So these uh, lanes are all from a PCR reaction that I ran. Oh, somebody chipped in. Thank you. Thank you, Ox. Greatly appreciated. Um, so yeah, these all these different, these lanes um, are the result of a PCR reaction. So if it didn't work, you'll see that this lane has nothing in it. So this is considered negative, whereas this is considered positive. And what's nice about this is not only are these lanes positive, you've got a you've got a band here that's a very specific size. So this is a an agarose gel, and so basically what you do is you put your sample in the little hole at the top, and then you put and this is all in a tank of liquid, and you put a voltage across this gel. And the smaller the piece of DNA is, the faster it moves through the gel, so it'll end up lower down on the gel. Um, once you've let it run, basically. So like these bits at the bottom, these are the primers. These are the bits that basically let you target the specific pieces of DNA. And they're tiny, so of course they're right at the bottom of the gel. Whereas the product, the thing that we're actually looking for, is much higher up because it's bigger. Um, so it's literally, it has a harder time moving through the gel. Whereas something like this, which is massive, is, you know, it's barely moved through the gel because it's so large. Um... And this, uh, these lanes here are what's called a ladder. Um, so there, these ones are kind of faint, but the the different rungs of the ladder are pieces of DNA of known size. So you're like, okay, well this is about you know 400, and so this is about at the same height. So you're like, yeah, okay, this is about 450 or whatever, and you know this is about 550 or whatever the case might be, or whatever the case may be. Um, so basically, what we need to do is we would need to de develop a PCR reaction that would target the virus that we think is the most likely to uh, be the culprit, basically. And we think, it's to, uh, we think it's tobacco mosaic virus. And, you know, if there's any plant experts in the comments, like, I'm going to keep an eye on uh, um, the, the comments. If, like, so I'm, I'm going to show you some more pictures of the, uh, of the thing. 
Did it really only open one image? Bummer. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to open up uh, some more pictures for you. Uh, where is it? Plant pics. Here we go. Um, so here's some here's some more pictures of my very very sad plants. So if you're if there's any plant experts who are listening in and you want to have a look at this and, and tell me if maybe this looks like some other virus you're used to seeing, then please let me know. Um, so this is a pepper plant. Um, this is a, a habanada. So it's a variety of habanero that is supposed to have the spicy turned off. So it's all the flavor and none of the spicy. Um, but you can see these little blotches here. And so this is the thing that I think is, is representative of it being tobacco mosaic virus um, or similar. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is, so that's, that's one photo. Here's uh, my eggplant. And so these are the only two that are actually infected as far as I can tell. Um, oh, it does let me scroll. That's fun. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in a little bit. And Windows is going to shit the bed when I do that. Okay, cool. Um, so you can see it on... So it's, this, is, this one's a little weird because it seems to... Own, like there's four plants or three plants in the same pot, but only one of... Or, or one of them seems to be perfectly fine while the rest of them seem to be infected. And so you can see it's kind of blotchy. Like this, to me, it looks like the, the same images that we were just looking at of toba tobacco mosaic virus. But the thing is, I don't smoke. Um, I don't have any tobacco products in my house. I have no idea how the hell it got in there. It could have been latent. So, like, um, sometimes the virus will kind of just hide. And um, when the, the, the plant produces seeds, it'll, it's already present in the seeds. So as soon as you plant it, it comes out through there. So that's, that's one possibility. The other possibility is maybe it came from one of my neighbors. Like... My neighbors smoke, and so maybe just through me like going to the laundry room or whatever, and maybe I touched a, a doorknob and it wasn't sterile enough, um, and you know they'd touched it, and so you know the virus spreads, and then I touched a plant, and now it's infected. Um, so that's one way. So that's either way, um, you know, very fr very very frustrating. Um, so somehow it got in. I don't know how. It could be the seeds. It could be the soil. It could be my idiot neighbors. I'm not sure which. Um, Currently, I'm just growing these in a mixture of soil and vermiculite. Um, nothing overly fancy, but because of this, I'm actually looking at, at switching to um, hydroponic because if, if it is the soil that this came from, then, I mean, that would that would just be awful. I don't know, and but, like, it could have been that, you know, maybe the, the worker that packaged the soil was smoking. I mean, I live in in Quebec, so there's a lot of fucking smokers. Um, so th this is very possible. Um, yeah, so um, let's zoom this out. Let's see if it'll... Where's... Okay, that's just the zoomed out view. Um, but yeah, so you can you can see that. I mean, it looks like that same modeling that you would get on like a tobacco mosaic or with a tobacco mosaic virus, and it's on both plants. So, yeah. Um, okay, I'm just. Um, it's the smoke that sped, that spreads the virus. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, then every time I open the the door to the the laundry room, then it could be coming in because I can smell the an idiot smoking in the other room um but i mean this is the reason why i now keep three different hepa fil filtering units in my apartment running at all times i've got one of them turned off right now just because it, it really makes it too loud for the stream um, but i've got one behind me um filtering the stuff for the lab i've got one in my room and then i've got one in the other plant area so i'm really trying to keep things as clean as i physically can um but you know sometimes shit gets fucked um um, somebody was asking about a QPCR machine. I do not have a QPCR machine. They're ridiculously expensive, and it's just kind of shitty tech. Not into it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the thing. So now, now we've seen what my plants look like. Now we know what the, what the deal is. Let's see if we can actually first develop a test, then develop a vaccine. Cool. So I'm going to close this, close this, close this this. Wonderful. So, um, I found this paper, which is Detection of Tobacco Mosaic Virus and Tomato Mosaic Virus, and actually I want to look at Tobacco Mosaic, or Tomato Mosaic Virus, just to see um, if it looks 
like anything interesting, um, or if it looks like what, what I've got. Um, and where did I put my phone? Ah! Sorry. Ugh, got so many cables and stuff. Um, so yeah, this doesn't this doesn't actually look like. Um, this doesn't look right. This this looks like some some bullshit. This does not look like what my plants have at all. Um, you can see it's a, it's a lot more brown. Um, it's it's much closer to like an etch like similar looking to like an etch virus or something. Um, <laughs> Someone's saying I'd rather live in Quebec than the U.S. right now. No, you wouldn't. You want to know how you spell Trump in French? Le Galt. Dude's a, excuse my French, but sh, like shit for brains hardly sums that dude up. Our, our premier is a moron and is about to be responsible for the deaths of thousands of people because he's a prick. Um, he's like, we need to save the economy. Fuck you. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, so, uh, I don't think it's a uh, tomato mosaic virus. It Thus far, tobacco mosaic virus is the closest looking thing to what I've got. So we're going to assume it's tobacco mosaic virus, and then I'll run the test, and we'll see. Um, because running a PCR reaction is dead easy. I can do a DNA extraction. I can run a PCR reaction. I've got all the reagents for it. It's not a big deal. Um, yes, Quebec is... It, Quebec, the, the moron in charge of Quebec is attempting to open it up when there's 30,000 cases in Quebec... Um, the majority of which are in Montreal. Um, and he's like, what? There's there's 15,000 cases in Montreal? Cool, let's open up. What? Um, yeah, and, and before this stream, I just went for groceries, and I almost tore my own hair out because of how frustrating everyone is because the amount of stupid people is just unfathomable. Like, I, like it's to the point of, like, I don't understand how people can be this ignorant and this stupid, and, like, how are we the same species? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's very frustrating. Anyways, end rant, back to science. Um, uh, asking for a photo of the backside. Um, I have a photo of the backside, I just don't know what's the best way of getting it onto my computer without it exposing details. Um, hmm. Um, just, I mean, for, for those who are asking, the, the, I mean, the backside of the, the leaf looks the same. Like, it doesn't, um, fuck it. Give me a second. I'm going to see if I can get this onto my computer, because it's on my phone. Um, this, this is going to take me a second. I'm going to see if I can, I, if I can find that picture, um, because... This is gonna be this is gonna be just entirely stupid. So give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna set this back to camera mode for a second, just so I can just hold this up. Um, so sorry for the glare. Um, hopefully you can see that. So that's the underside of the pepper plant. Um, there's no obvious mold. There's no the only thing you can see the little spots shining through, um, but otherwise there's nothing, and it's the same on the eggplant. There's no fungus, there's no weird growth, it's, you can just see the spots poking through. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what, um, so I'll, I'll tweet out some of these, these pictures and, and, uh, see what, um, you know, some of the, the, the experts think. Did, wait, did it not actually show that? Oh shit. Okay. I forgot I put this into studio mode, so you couldn't actually see any of that. I'm going to I'm going to show that again. Just Okay. So this is the for those excuse the glare. Um so that's the that's the underside of the eggplant. Um that's the the underside of the the pepper plant. And you you can see there's no weird growth. You can just kind of see the spot poking through. Um, okay, I'm gonna set this back to this and transition and this. Cool, great. Um, cool. Yeah, there's no bite marks. I mean, I definitely had an insect problem, but I've dealt with the insect problem. Um, I had thrips, um, I've had fungus gnats, and I've had aphids. The aphids I've dealt with, the fungus gnats I'm still dealing with because they're 
bastards. Um, but the thrips I've dealt with, um, I used parasitic nematodes in the soil to get rid of them. Um, which now that I think about, well, no, I had the I had the virus before I did the nematodes. I think. I honestly can't remember now. I don't actually know if I had the nema. No, no, I definitely I definitely had the virus before I put the nematodes on. So the nematodes weren't the the vector. Anyway, anyways, moving on. Um, <sighs> okay, cool. So um, this this paper seems to have uh, a PCR reaction for detecting. Um, and unfortunately, these guys are doing RT PCR, which is annoying. But I have all the reagents for it, so that's actually fine. Um, I really just need this DOI number. Copy. Oh come on, you fucker. Um, okay, I need to copy this. Oh hey. What do you know? This is actually an open paper. I thought I was going to have to sci-hub this, but nope, we're good. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, okay, primer sequences were designed based on publishing blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, one primer pair was chosen for specific amplification of... Okay, this is... Wow, this is actually really, really easy. Um, I don't think it's the... Wait. I think, yeah, this. I think this one's tomato. I think this is tobacco. So I'm pretty sure that these are the primers right here. Um, and forward primer corresponding to nucleotides 630 to 648 corresponding to... Okay, so it's actually a, a reasonably large uh, product. Um, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about RT-PCR in a second. I just wanted to see if... I hadn't actually opened this paper. Like, I found the paper, but I hadn't actually read it yet because I wanted to do that on um, on the stream. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So this is so this would be the reaction. Um, this is what should happen. Um, so you can see that there's a nice band here. I believe three... Okay. Um, uh, what do we got? Um... Okay, lane four, tobacco mosaic and virus infected, total RNA. So yeah, um, this is, okay, this is really, lane, okay. Doubly infected, lane five, lane six with, okay, here, yes, good, perfect, that's what I thought. So um, the, the higher band um, is indicative of tobacco mosaic virus and the lower band is indicative of tomato mosaic virus. So in this case, we're expecting an 880 base pair band, which is pretty solid. Actually, that's 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 fairly that's fairly doable. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna just use these primers. These look perfect. I mean, and, and admittedly, um, that like there could be issues with them, but um, I have nothing better to go with. So they're designed. They work. It's something to start with. So I am in. Benchling. Oh, I've got to refresh the page. So I'm going to just refresh the page really quick. Um, so for those of you who are, haven't tuned into one of these streams before, um, the website I'm using right now is called Benchling. It's benchling.com. It's basically a really uh, simple, basic um, way of... Well, I, mean, I mean, basically, it, it's a glorified, like, text editor, essentially, um, like all code. Um, so I've got to go to spider brick main... I'm going to make a new folder. So, yeah, it's basically a glorified... Um, uh, it's a glorified text editor, essentially. So, it, like, it, it's just, like, long strings of, of text, and it also shows you a graphical version of what this text means, essentially. So you can, like, annotate certain areas so you know, like, okay, this chunk, for example, is, you know, whatever this is. This chunk is this. Ironically, um, in an, the last episode of Who's Gene that we did, um, we de we developed this plasmid, which, if you were to put it into coffee plants, would um, let me scroll down. So this part um, would actually interfere with uh, caffeine synthase. Um, so it basically breaks the the plant's ability to make caffeine. But we used this promoter, which is the CAMV 35S promoter, also known as the cauliflower mosaic virus promoter. So it's a very strong promoter. It's taken out of a different virus. Um, in fact, let's have a look. 
since the name of the game is uh, viruses and plant viruses, let's see what cauliflower mosaic virus actually is. Um, so yeah, this is this is what this would normally do to a plant when it's in the virus itself, but um, biologists have basically stolen the code from the virus and realized that it's very effective for genetic engineering, and so they just nick it, and now we use it. And we, I mean, we do this the same thing in mammalian work as well. Um, the CMV or cytomegalovirus promoter is very common, um, and it leads to very high levels of expression in mammalian cell lines. Um, cool. So um, now we've got this. I'm going to make a new olgio, um, which is what we call um, a primer or also known as the, um, you know, one of the, so basically, basically the, the primers, the olgio that I'm, oligo that I'm, I'm making or that I'm taking out of this paper. Um, this, this one uh, defines the start of the sequence we're looking for, and this one defines the end of the sequence we're looking for. And so basically what you do is you have a company make these two different um, little bits of DNA, and these are tiny, so this will, this, will maybe cost me 15, 20 bucks tops, um, which is one of the nice things about PCR. Once you've got the reagents, the actual test costs nothing, um, or damn near. Um, so I'm gonna label this to my, uh, TMV or a tobacco mosaic virus forward, and it's always important to make sure you remember, you, oh, thank you, Niles. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always important that you name your shit properly because otherwise you end up with a bazillion tubes in your freezer and you can't tell what any of them are. So I have a, I have a naming scheme that I normally use for my um, like projects that I'm actually like working on. Like, so if it's something that I'm, I'm using for like putting DNA together, um, I'll label this um, SB00 or like, you know, SB and then, you know, the, the number. Um, I think I'm on 0027, I think. I, I think I've, I've me, me and my, my lab partner, Vesta, who has appeared in some of the videos, and I want to have her on as a, a guest on the stream at some point. Um, she's, she's brilliant and especially good at, at designing um, primers and stuff. Um, cool, so I've got the, the forward loaded in, which is great. Why is it not in this folder? Oh, because because I'm stupid and I put it in the wrong folder. We're gonna we're gonna ignore this folder and pretend it doesn't exist because it's you're not supposed to see this yet. <laughs> um, it'll be in a future video. Um, there's a there's a question. Um, are there commercial products to counter the virus? Uh, flamethrower. <laughs> it's it's true. We have nothing. Um, if you've got a virus, you you get a flamethrower and you light all your plants on fire and you hope that it doesn't spread. Um, so I'm gonna actually recreate that that olio again. Uh, actually, wait, shift. Um, hmm. Oh, actually, I can, I can just move this. Never mind. Um, so I'm gonna put this here. Move. And that should actually move it in the right folder. Good. Wonderful. Um, Um, somebody asked, do you keep any ice blocks in your freezer as thermal mass to account for temp rises when you open the door? No, I'm just, I just don't leave the door open. I just work quick. Um, uh, what else we got? Uh, yeah, spider, <laughs> spider bricks. Um, it's the, the nickname that we've given to... Uh, the, the spider silk project, because the, the goal is not actually fibers, the goal is bricks. Um, somebody asked, how likely is it that we actually find a vaccine within a year for corona? We already had, we had a vaccine within days of corona. The only reason that it's not available is because the testing system is stupid as fuck. Um... It's like, let's do clinical ones. Why are we doing clinical ones? There's a fucking pandemic. Skip to clinical two. Ugh. Anyways, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole rant I don't feel like doing today. I'm, I've had a frustrating enough day. I don't need to also be angry at the medical system. Um, 
and and honestly, I don't I don't want to I don't want to just you know let emotions out and not give accurate information because that's just irresponsible. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that in. That looks different. I'm gonna just make sure that I grab the right one. A ACC, yes, good, wonderful. Going back to here, great. Now we've got our primers. Wonderful. That was way oh, fuck me again. Why does it keep putting it in that folder? It's really annoying. Um, okay, moved. Wonderful. So now we've got our forward and reverse. So in theory. I'm gonna, or not in theory, I'm going to have these made, um, because it only takes two days, and, you know, if I order these tomorrow, then I'll have them before Friday, basically. Um, so, I mean, my, my plants, other than being, you know, a little bit speckled, still look pretty healthy, so it, it you know, I'd have enough time to deal with this, um, but at the very least, I could know, and, and, you know, I'm going to be really careful and just keep things really, really sterile um, and not contaminate my entire apartment. But um, I'm going to do my best to just, you know, be really, really careful. I can run this reaction, find out if this works. Um, if it does, I will, you, I mean, you know, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. I will post pictures of when I run this reaction because I want to know. I would love to know if my plants are fucked. <laughs> well, I know if my plants are fucked. I would like to know if this is the thing that's currently fucking my plants. Um, so before we uh, move move on past the PCR thing, I want to just talk really quickly about what makes this PCR reaction different than a normal PCR reaction. So a normal PCR reaction, um, let's get some pictures to look at. PCR reaction. Um, so just to have something to look at. So this is this is like a, a normal PCR reaction where you know, you've got your primers, which are red, and you've got the individual like DNA letters. And you, as you run the reaction, um, it amplifies the one product, and, you, and so you get millions and millions of copies. But um, as you may have noticed in the earlier images that I showed, tobacco mosaic virus keeps its genome not as DNA, which is what PCR requires to function properly, um, but as RNA, which is single-stranded and completely does not work with PCR. So there's actually an extra step here, um, and it's it's actually the same thing that you gotta do with coronavirus, um, which is RT-PCR. So basically the first thing that you do um, is, oh wow, that's a great graphic. Thank you, Sigma. Um, so basically the way this works is you do a, a you know, an RNA, DNA, whatever, isolation um, from the tissue that you want to analyze uh, or the sample you want to analyze but then the first thing that you do rather than immediately running PCR on it is you actually have to do a little flipperoo and turn the RNA back into DNA or, or not back into it but into DNA so you you do this with an enzyme called reverse transcriptase um, which is does what it sounds like it it makes uh, it translates the RNA into DNA and so you end up with a DNA copy um, and from there, you can actually run PCR normally, um, but you've got to do that little flipperoo first. Um, and one of the reasons why this is really frustrating um, is because one of one of the things that contaminates essentially everything um, is something called RNAs, which is a protein, and it destroys RNA. That's its whole job. Uh, unfortunately, RNAs is aggressively stable. So, like, I can autoclave it for hours and it won't break down. Like, it is, it, it's stable up to something like 140 degrees. So, like, I literally can't get an autoclave hot enough to destroy this stuff. Um, and so the same things that would destroy it would actually ruin my sample. So the, the problem with this is it's on your skin. It's in dust. It's in the air. It's, in, it's on every surface. It's all over the place. So it ruins RNA samples. And it's an absolute terror. Um, so what you got to do is you basically got to process this out. So what you would have to do is normally there, there's two ways of dealing with this. Either A, you get very expensive uh, equipment in the sense of like you have to get special tips and tubes and everything that's guaranteed RNA is free. Um, you've got to get water that's been treated with, uh, I believe it's called DPC. And don't quote me on that because I'm going off memory here. Um, and that actually destroys the RNA. But by the time you go to use that water, um, it's, it's fucked off, and so it's, it's safe, and it won't wreck the rest of your reagents. Um, or you can buy an inhibitor of RNAs, which actually comes from human placenta. Um, I don't know how that works. I don't want to know. It's weird. I don't ask questions. I just, I just buy the thing that the paper tells me to buy. Um, 
And um, so you can buy that inhibitor and you put it into your solutions and it basically turns RNAs off and so it doesn't wreck your, your like wreck your shit. Um, but the other thing is, it's not actually technically necessary. Like if you just work fast, so you do your, your extraction and then you immediately run your, your RT-PCR on it, um, it should be fine. Because as soon as you've sw done the little flipperoo into DNA, you're fine. Um, it's just when it's in the RNA state when it's actually vulnerable and can be broken. Um, but the nice thing with PCR is you only really need one molecule of the RNA you're looking for to survive. Um, and that'll be enough to make literally millions of copies. That's literally the whole point of PCR. Um, so that's the thing. Um, so for this, I, I can't run just regular PCR. I got to run RT-PCR, which is really just an extra step. The first thing that you do is you do the DNA extraction, you add your reagents, cook it at 50 degrees Celsius for, I think it's half an hour, might be 45 minutes. Um, and then you either add your um, PCR reagents or you've already added them at the start of all of this. And, and then you just run the reaction and you're good. Somebody says, bio literally sounds like black magic. I mean, it is. Like, science is just magic that works. Like, anytime somebody's like, I believe in magic and crystal healing, I'm like, you're just boring. Like, science is magic that works. That's just, it's just like, I mean, in, in bio, like, it's like, you need the blood of baby cows. Okay. Like, just some of your shit just requires it. Like, you're just like, all right, all right I'm going to go put a baby cow into a blender. If that's the thing that makes my reactions work, then fuck it. Let's go for it. Like, it's like, oh, you need, like, human placenta goop to make your reactions work? Okay. <laughs> like, um, um, so, that's the thing. Okay, you're getting banned. That's enough of that shit. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs> what's, what's your favorite, uh, favorite science spell? holograms I'm, I'm i'm particular to opal and photonic crystals also a thing that's basically magic like like opal as a stone is like fucking magic like the way it works is insane and like it's it's the only reason opal is pretty is basically because of quantum mechanics and like it it blows my fucking mind every time i hear that um, and I still don't understand it because it's quantum mechanics. And if you say you understand quantum mechanics, you don't actually understand quantum mechanics or you're selling something. Um, so anyways, moving on. Um, so we now have our detection stuff done. So I'm going to order these and I'm going to run this and I'm going to actually probably do this as a video. Like this was not a video I wanted to make. This is a video I have to make because I fucking, I have to. Okay, cool. So now we, now we know how we can detect it. Let's pretend for a second, fingers crossed hope that it is actually to uh, tobacco mosaic virus. I mean, I don't, I hope it's a manganese deficiency and that I'm totally wrong and totally off, but let's pretend for a second here that it's tobacco mosaic virus. Um, um, so yeah, we're going to pretend it's tobacco mosaic virus because I have a paper on how you deal with tobacco mosaic virus. <laughs> um, so now we can talk about plant vaccines. Plant vaccines are weird as I'd mentioned. So the, this is the, the name of the paper for those of you who would like to follow along at home. It says highly efficacious antiviral protection of plants by small interfering RNAs identified in vitro. So the way that, so there's actually two papers. There's this one and then there's this one. So this one's more of like a vaccine, whereas this one is more of a treatment. And I don't know if that's entirely accurate. I don't even know if this is gonna work. Um, it might actually just make the plant commit seppuku. Not sure. We'll find out. But, long and the short of it. Um, so let's talk about the vaccine -y one first. So basically what you do is, if you can give the plant... Like, the plant recognizes that there's a virus. Like, they're not stupid. Like, they're, they're able to figure out very quickly that, like, a virus has infected them, and they immediately start trying to deal with it. Um, but most viruses have... Um, defenses against the defenses basically so like they interfere with the plant's ability to actually mount a defense which is how they're able to continue to propagate so 
what you can do is you can actually make a vaccine for the plants and it only works for a couple of days. Like it does not, it's not long lasting. It's not like a tetanus shot that lasts for 10 years or whatever. Like it, you got five days <laughs> and then it stops working and you got to like reapply. But I mean, five days can be the difference between your entire crop getting fucked and not. Um, so basically what you do is you have to provide um, double stranded RNA. Um, not entirely sure why it needs to be double stranded. It's just what the paper says. It's what they figured out. So we're going with it. <laughs> if there's one thing you're going to learn about bio today, it's that if the paper says that that's the way you do it, that's the way you do it. Don't fuck with it until you've tried it. Um, so basically the way this, oh, okay, actually it, it just says it right here. Processing of double stranded RNA, the trigger molecule of RNA interference into small interfering RNAs by dicer like enzymes. So what does that actually mean? Basically what we do is we're going to apply, uh, so this, this paper, when we're talking about like a vaccine, um, is talking about applying double-stranded RNA. So basically what we would do is we take part of the genome of tobacco mosaic virus and we make it in RNA, specifically a double-stranded version of the RNA, presumably for stability, um, and so it doesn't like bend back on itself and get all weird. Um, so you, you have the uh, double-stranded... Um, RNA, which is basically a chunk of the uh, tobacco mosaic virus genome. And once that gets into the plant cells, the plant cuts it apart into these tiny little, really tiny, like we're talking like 20 nucleotides long, like 20, 20 RNA letters long. It cuts them into these tiny little fragments, which um, some of the proteins inside the plants will actually pick up. And in the same way as something like CRISPR, where it's using a short little targeting RNA to find other things that match, it basically will go in and using this stuff as a template, it'll, it'll start scanning every piece of RNA that it finds. Um, and if there's a match, so if you know, you've got your, your one half here that's bound to your protein complex, that's your target basically. So it's scanning and scanning, it's checking things. It's like, does this stick? No, it doesn't stick, doesn't stick. But when it finally hits a, a tobacco mosaic virus genome, um, it'll stick perfectly. Um, at which point the, the protein that it's stuck to basically goes like snip and just like cuts the DNA and completely wrecks it. So if you target these, um, sm these small pieces of RNA to something important in the virus's genome, like one of its proteases or replicases or whatever. The, like, you pick an important protein in the, vir in the virus's genome, you target it. When the plant sticks, it breaks it, and it, it messes with the, the virus's ability to propagate, essentially. So it, it like, completely kills its ability to spread. Um, and from there, Basically what you can do, like, I mean, at that point, the, the virus stops spreading and it's enough that the plant has enough time to break down all of those RNA and viral bits um, and stops the spread of the virus. Now, in theory, this sounds really good. Like, you just gotta... Well, thank you, Apica... I can't, I can't pronounce your name, but thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Um... Yes, but it's like Cinderella targeting. It's like, does if the shoe doesn't fit, it ignores you. But if the shoe fits, it beats you over the head with a bat. Um, so, um, basically, in theory, all we would have to do is provide the right double-stranded RNA. But the problem with this is double-stranded RNA is very large. Um, the, the, so, I, I've actually skimmed through this paper a little bit. This is the reason I have it uh, pulled up. So, you can see here that the... Uh, Double-stranded RNA is uh, 977 base pairs long. It's a little big. Um, so, ooh, actually, this, this one's not so bad. Um, so this is 480 base pairs. That's actually not so bad. It's not quite as small as I'd have liked, um, but it's also not bad. So um, I'm going to just kind of talk this out, and we're going to see if... Um, this makes sense, and then we're going to kind of action. So the, the other option, rather than doing this, so basically the whole point of doing this is for the generation of these siRNAs. So it's these, you, you basically provide this really big template with which the plant can cut into tiny pieces and use that for targeting. But there's no 
inherent reason you need to apply the entire thing, you could just instead apply the smaller pieces, which is really nice because they're so small that the same company that'll make the oleos, these tiny little pieces of DNA, they're so small that it could actually, like they could make me um, all the DNA that I need. So instead of having to like go to my main gene synthesis company, which is slow and could take them months, um, th this company de delivers DNA in two days. So if I can make something, and their, their limit, like this, the largest, um, I mean, I, I can actually show you all the DNA. Oh, Castle Knock is on. Um, so this is, the, this is the company that I use. Um, these guys are fantastic. Like, they deliver in two days. Um, so um, they, yeah, they, they can do up to 65 bases. So that's, we have 65 letters to work with. Um, which, you know, is, is a little small, but it's, it's doable. Um, somebody asked, how do you know where to cut the RNA? Um, you find things in papers. <laughs> um, so one of the reasons I have this paper uh, pulled up is because this one, I believe, looks specifically at tobacco mosaic virus. So I mean, if I go do this, I do... Oh, wait, shit. Which, which virus are they doing? Oh... Oh, oh no. Um, I need to double check and make sure this is. Wait, TBSV. What's what's TBSV? That's not good. Um, must have said it in the introduction. Um, sorry, I'm just I'm just trying to find which specific virus this is because if this is the wrong one, we're fucked, and I've got to do this by hand, which is annoying. Okay, silencing, blah blah blah. Oh come on, really? Which? What's to the Google's TBSV virus? Oh no. <laughs> It's the wrong one. Bummer. Bummer, bummer, bummer. That sucks. Okay, well, that means we're doing this by hand. Fuck. Okay, well, this just got a lot harder. I was really, I was really counting on that, but, but we're going to do some Googling. Um, and we're going to see if somebody can have already done this and save us some time. So basically the thing I'm trying to avoid doing is... Um, Oh, there we go. This will do. Um, in there we go. Again, wait, constructs against. Wait, inhibit. What the fuck? Am I reading this right? Sorry, it's 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 hard to process um, like technical information and talk at the same time. But I'm I'm trying to do my best. Um, Yeah, so, so one of the reasons that they'll go with um, the first option, which is this, where it's like that whole long chunk of double-stranded RNA, um, is because then you don't need to like figure out exactly which interfering RNA is going to do the best job. Um, whereas this paper, the reason I even had it up, and now I realize I'm an idiot and it was the wrong virus, um, is because these guys basically tested huge numbers of, excuse me, um, huge numbers of different um, interfering RNAs um, in vitro, figured out which ones were going to work the best, and then applied that to the plants. So I was hoping to basically use their work um, to my benefit and say, be like, well, you know, they've already figured out which one works the best. Um, so, you know, maybe I don't need to do this. But now I'm going to actually have to find a different paper. It's not a big deal. We'll figure it out. Um, but that just makes this a little more difficult. But that's okay. Um, this one, what do we got? Um, Host proteins associated with tonoplast membrane are shown to be required for fissure mode. Okay. Wait, is this the. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's see what the Googles has to say. Um, what's this one? So I'm just trying to see if I can find a paper that actually has. I mean, and also I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye uh, on the uh, um, 
on the comments. So if anybody can find a paper, basically what we're looking for is a small interfering RNA that targets tobacco mosaic virus. If, you, if anyone can find one, um, let me know. This, this paper might be it, but um, we'll see. Uh, what's SAR? Eduardo, what's what's SAR mean? I don't recognize that acronym. Uh, oh, systemic required resistance. I don't know how that works. Um, okay, well, I don't know what this is, so we're going to learn about it. Um, I don't know if this works. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so if it, okay. Um, no, I don't think this is the right paper. Okay, let's see what else we got. Um, modification of small RNAs, no. Uh, Translate express short hairpin targeting this. That sounds right. Um, interferes with virus infection. This is that's exactly what I want to hear. Um, uh, okay, an intermediate, an intermediate of the RNA uh, pathway has been shown to be effective in inhibiting virus infection in mammalian cells and cultured plant cells. Um, here we report using Agrobacterium to get it in there. Um, expression of short hairpin RNAs could inhibit mosaic virus. That. That is exactly the thing I want. Yes, please. Um, hmm. Okay, well, let's just do this one. Uh, copy, go to here. Do -do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Cool, let's see what we get. <laughs> have you tried Google Scholar for searching papers? I have this wonderful thing called SciHub. Um, I just want to see if this gives me the hairpin some... Oh, please don't be it. Oh, yes! Yes! Sorry, I'm... The reason I'm, I'm suddenly very excited um, is because sometimes the people who write papers are idiots and will provide a table like this, except it'll be an image of the table. So you can't, like, highlight anything. It's just, like, it's trying to highlight a picture. That doesn't work. Um, so anyone who does that's a bastard and needs to be lit on fire because that's the worst. Um, but this does look promising. Um, which one? Okay, plant leaves inoculated with plant sap extract from uh, 1519. Displayed none or few lesions, respectively. Okay, so I like none. 1519 seems to be the one that we want. Um, and I think that was up here. Yeah, 1519, it's up here. Um, how large is this? I don't know. Let's put, let's paste it in here. Let's see what we got. Create. Olga. Okay, that was why I was doing that. We're going to do this here. Boop. Wow, that's, that's pretty long. I'm going to just click create. I just leave it as entitled. I just want to know how large it is. Okay, it's 70. It's a little large. Um... It's, it's so much easier to add a picture of something than adding all the letter codes. Yeah, well, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care that it's easier. It's, it's bad publishing habits, and nobody should do that shit. Um, okay, so th there's something underlined here, which I suspect 
um, is the thing that actually targets this. Um, okay, sense, loop, anti-sense, terminator. Why are these so large? I don't understand. Why is this so big? Okay, wait, there's a, okay, the complement, okay, yes, fine. Um, target sequences of the thing are underlined and in bold. Okay, so this is the only part that matters. The rest of it doesn't matter. We just need this. This, and then that's the loop, and I assume that's the anti-sense. Um, and then this is junk. I think. Um, can somebody double check this for me, make sure I'm not losing my, losing my mind here? Um... Right, so it says um, the complementary target sequences are underlined and in bold, respectively. Uh, and thymidines, so yes, thymidines, um, are underlined and in bold, respectively. Sense oligonucleotides of short hairpin RNA have five nucleotides different from the other ones, which are in italics. Okay. So why would you go... Why would you why would you do this? Why would you have I mean maybe maybe I'm missing something. Why would you have the sense and anti sense sequences? Wait a second, this is backwards. I think. Is that track? Because yeah, this if this is TT and it's bolded, and this is AA and this is bolded. Um G T T G Yeah, okay, this is D okay, yes, fine. That that makes sense. Um Why are they doing it double stranded though? I don't understand. Because these are the only bits that target, so this is loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This, yeah, I mean, so okay. Let, let me just pull something up for uh, uh, just in, for a second. Uh, decaf coffee. So if we look at the the decaf coffee plasmid that we made last time, and conveniently we're already in that area. So this the the targeting bit that we actually care about um, was only 18 long, which is not very long. The loop. The random bit of garbage that we just use as the, the loop um, was 9, and then the reverse complement was this. So this should make literally like a loop of uh, RNA, which is what we want. Um, this is the bit that targets. This is the important part. So if we're looking at this, so if I'm looking at this paper right, this is the thing that matters. Um, let me just see if this matches. So it's C, G, G, so we're expecting a G, C, C. Yeah, so this really does bend back on itself. So why are you providing the anti-sense? I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? Um, um, just to be clear, are you trying to create a vaccine or an antiviral? Yes. It should do both, in theory. I, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not a plant guy. I just, I just don't want my plants to die. I'm pulling this out of my ass because I don't want to make my plants. I want my plants not to die, and I want something that's doable. So I think this might just... Basically, this is one of those, it's just crazy enough that it might just work. So basically, once we're done designing this uh, targeting sequence, we're going to talk about how I'm going to actually make this. Because like I said... I'm actually doing this. I'm not, this is not like theoretical. This, the, the reason we like pre-chose this one is because I'm doing this and it should only cost me like 30 or $40 worth of materials in theory, fingers crossed, but we'll get there. Um, uh, okay, um, somebody posted another paper um, hmm. I think this is good though. I think this is. I think this is already want uh, what we want. I can't figure out why we need the anti sense, um, and I, I think I'd have to actually read their thing more carefully. But I suspect the reason is um, because they're actually doing this in agrobacterium, so they need to, which is not what I intend on doing. Um, Oh no! Wait, shit! You would you would actually still have to get both made. Fuck. No, that's fine. I can I can make that work. I can totally make that work. This is fine. This is this is totally fine. Um, okay, so we're going to assume that this is the bit that we need. So I oh, wait. Shit! I missed a letter. Um, 
I'm like, it's it's weird having to do this live and like think through it live. It's hard. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna make a new thing, uh, a new DNA sequence. Uh, we're gonna call it a funny name. Um, TMV Doom. Yeah. Um, and we're going to define this as linear, which is different than what we've done every other time, which is one of the other reasons I wanted to do this, because it's weird. Okay, so we're going to go... Oh, shit, that's not... That's not going to do anything. Okay, pasty-paste. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to go ahead, grab this part, just so that I can... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this the other way. I'm going to grab the middle bit. So I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing in just a second. I'm just, I'm just trying to uh, get this done really quick. Come on, just fucking deselect. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab this. We're going to label this. I'm going to call this loop. Uh, save. I'm going to call this. Oh, come on, you fucker. There we go. Um, we're going to create annotation. We're going to go forward target. And we're going to grab our target complement. So like I said, I'll explain this in just a second. Um, I just need to get this written down so that I can actually explain my plan, because my plan is insane, but we're going with it. Um, target complement. Wonderful. Okay. Cool. So, the way that these other papers have been doing it, and this has actually been pretty consistent. Oh, come on. No, don't do that. Open back up. Um, so the way that these, these papers have been doing this is they've been using uh, a species of bacteria called Agrobacterium tumificens, I think, um, which is really, really good at infecting plants. And when it does this, it also delivers a, a chunk of DNA to those plants, which is why they use it. So they basically remove all of the pathogenic stuff out of the bacteria um, and only give it stuff that you want the bacteria to deliver, essentially. Um, so this is a very effective way of getting DNA or RNA or whatever into plants. Um, but I don't have agrobacterium. I don't want to work with agrobacterium. I don't want to be spraying my whole house down with agrobacterium because that sounds like a really dumb idea. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... I'm going to basically try and do this the... And, and also, like, there's a pandemic, so getting access to materials is really hard right now. So I'm just trying to use what I've got. So here's my plan. The long and the short of this is, now that we've got this, right, I need to make this stretch of DNA into RNA. So you got to figure what is the easiest, and so just, just as a, a reminder, if for anyone who's just tuning in or, or, you know, had a brain fart and wasn't paying attention, um, this chunk here is the thing that's actually going to target the virus, and but in order for it to um, do so, and for it, you basically need so this this back half here um, will basically fold back, and you can actually see it. Um, so if you see T G A A, you go T G A A because it's the complement. So basically, what's going to happen is this thing is the thing that we want. This is the loop. This is garbage. Um, and then this is the complement. So once this bends back on itself inside the plant, um, the loop gets cut off, the complement gets removed, and then it uses just this top half for the actual targeting. Um, in theory, it'll actually use both, but the top half is the one that's going to work. Um, I'm missing an A. Where am I missing an A? in the loop. Where, what? What do you mean I'm missing an A in the loop? No, I'm not. Where, the, the loop is, is random. The, the loop doesn't need to be anything specific. The, the loop is just random letters, like they, they don't matter. 
when it copied and pasted. What? No. Alright, what? Oh, I see what you mean. I copied an extra C. That's not that I'm... Or something. I don't know. Grab. Let me, let me just check this again. Uh, come on. Just fucking... Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah, my bad. I'll fix that. So that goes there. This needs to be 20... And this needs to be 28. And then this one needs to also move up a letter. This needs to be 29. Okay, that fixed it. Okay, crisis averted. Thank you. This is why I like doing these live. Y'all double check my shit. Anywho, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. This is just like, it's not like I missed like pasting a letter in. It was just the annotation would be wrong. But I, I appreciate the, uh, the heads up. So thank you. Um... Yeah, text highlighting in PDFs is a nightmare. Cool. Well, thank you for catching that. Um, okay, so back to the thing. So rather than using the weird bacteria to try and get some chunk of... So, like, I'd have to get, like, a whole big chunk of, of plasmid, and i need to do a bunch of engineering on it, and it's just... Fuck all that noise. I don't have any of the supplies for it right now. I don't I don't have a plant plasmid. I don't have the right enzymes. I don't have the right thing to do that. I literally cannot do that method. Um, but the reason I had this paper pulled up was that apparently you can just spray the plant with RNA and it ends up inside the plant. So rather than using um, this weird double-stranded RNA, like these big chunks of double-stranded RNA... What I want to do is I want to apply this short bit of RNA. And so, you know, in this paper, they, they list off a whole bunch of different ways of getting the, DNA, the RNA into the plant. Um, one of them is using, like, clay nanoparticles. So you got to get the, just the right kind of clay, basically, and you dilute the hell out of it um, and mix it with the RNA and spray it onto the plant, and that seems to do it. Um, the other thing that works really, really well is this compound called PEI, um, which we've used actually in a previous video for the Neuron Project. Um, um, I have some PEI, which is the other reason that I'm interested in it. Um, so it's, it's polyethylene imine. Um, it works really, really well. You basically mix the, th the RNA or DNA or whatever that you want to get into the cells with this compound. Uh, let's see if I can polyethylene... Polyethylene imine... Um, it's, I think this is the one that I have. Um, so it's this, it's, this is actually what's called a dendromer, which are fascinating compounds. It's really just this same simple short compound, this like N carbon carbon N, um, that you can grow into these really crazy structures. And there's linear versions, there's these weird branching versions, but I think this is the one that I have. So basically this will stick to, like it'll, it'll, form a complex with the thing that you want to deliver, be it RNA or DNA, and it makes it much easier for this to get into the plant. So the idea is that I'm going to mix this with the um, RNA that we've just found, which is this guy, and I should be able to just spray it on the plant um, or inject it into the plant, and that should do the job. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe an airbrush, maybe just a little spritzy bottle, not entirely sure yet. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically the plan. Like I'm going to make the, the weird complex, dilute it down into some like sterile water or whatever and, and do that. But we still have a problem, which is how do I actually make this? Because I can have the DNA company make me both halves of this. So like I'd, I'd have them make the, um, the coding strand and the complement strand, so the top half and the bottom half, so it's, it's two pieces of DNA that I would have to have them make, which I can then just mix in a tube and they'll stick together. I, I can like heat them up, cool them down, they'll stick. But it's like, okay, well now I've got a piece of DNA and that doesn't really help me because I, need, I really need this in RNA for this to work properly. Um, um, so now the question is, okay, well, 
you know, that's all fine and well, but how do I actually make the RNA? Because it's the RNA that I need, not DNA, but DNA is what I can buy. So it looks like we have 20 nucleotides left that we can still work with here, right? So there's, or maybe a little less. So there's, or uh, 18. So yeah, we've got 47 bases here, which means we have 18 bases to work with, which is great. So now I want to introduce you to a fan-fucking-tastic site um, called the Open Enzyme Collection. So this is um, run by um, the Free Genes Project and um, the, the always wonderful Keone um, out of Stanford. Um, so the Free Genes Project is just so damn cool. But one of the things that they've done is they've made this collection of enzymes that they've made the DNA for it. Like they've literally like they've printed the DNA for them and they've loaded them into plasmids. I think, I think they've loaded them into plasmids. Um, so the idea is you can order this from them and they'll just send you the entire thing. It's free. Um, I think you got to pay for shipping, but other than that, like they send you all the, they basically send you like a tray with, I, I want to say it's a 386 well plate basically and inside each one of these little wells and you got to like look up that it comes with a table to tell you like what each well is um inside each of these different wells comes with um um one of the plasmids that codes for one of the enzymes in this collection so what's really cool about this is then you can take that plasmid put it into whatever bacteria you want and that bacteria will start expressing that enzyme so what's really cool about this is you don't actually need to purify out those enzymes you can actually use like you can just basically grow up the bacteria with the thing in it and the bacteria will produce the enzyme that you want and you can just pop the enzyme like you can just pop all the bacteria using like lysozyme or whatever um and you end up with like a raw extract of bacteria goop essentially so so okay so the the actual like protocol for this is you grow up the bacteria in like uh you know 50 to 100 mils or whatever um you, you grow up a bunch of bacteria then you spin it all down so that you've got like a little concentrated pellet of bacteria you remove all the liquid resuspend them in like a really tiny amount of water and then you add an enzyme to that to it to pop all the bacteria open so when you do this you essentially end up with this like solution that at least partially contains the enzyme you want. Cool. Now, for something like a restriction enzyme, um, which is these restriction endonucleases, for example. Um, so let's let's have a look at some of the things that they carry in their collection because there's a lot of really cool ones, and I'll show you the one that I'm actually interested in in a second. Um, oh, fuck off! Fuck you, Google. Fuck. I was really worried about that. Um, okay, well, here we are. Um, so these are some of the enzymes that they contain, for example. Um, so um, like E. coli, for example. This is a really common restriction enzyme, and it's something I use. It's something I've used before. Um, PSTI, these are, all, these are all some of the enzymes. I think the green ones are the available ones. I don't know if the red ones are. Um, but, um, what's really cool is you can use that raw extract of bacteria as a way to, um, handle DNA. So like if you're, if you need to cut some DNA, you can actually just use that raw bacteria extract, um, and it'll, it'll work as if you'd had the pure stuff from NEB. Now this is obviously going to, you know, chew up your DNA a little bit in places you don't want, but like it works. So let me show you the one that I actually am interested in. So if you see, if you know, you'll see DNA ligase, DNA polymerase. Really what I'm looking for is RNA polymerases. Now, please don't do the thing I think you're about to do again because you're just the fucking worst. Okay, good. We're good. We're good. God, fuck, fuck you. Fuck. Oh, sorry. Um, Um, so these are the ones that are available. 
and you'll see they're, they're nice and green. So there's three RNA polymerases here. So we've got T3, T7, and SP6. These polymerases are actually taken out of a virus, um, specifically a bacteriophage, which is a type of virus that only infects bacteria, because everything gets viruses. Um, What's really handy about these is the promoters. So the actual sequence of DNA that this enzyme will bind to is very tiny. So like if we if we look at like the let's let just this happens to be open. So if we if we look at this for example, like this is the um, cauliflower mosaic virus promoter, and you can see it's I mean it's not huge, but it's not tiny either. Like it's it's chunky. Um, it's I mean it is about 345 base pairs long, which is obviously way too long for what we're looking to do. Whereas the T3, T7, and SP6 promoters are, they're like 10 letters long. They're absolutely tiny. In fact, let's look this up. Um, uh, T7 promoter sequence. So one of the one of the other reasons that I'm, I'm interested in this open enzyme collection is my, my lab partner, Vesta, um, I just got this in theory. I, I think she got the entire collection. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what Keone sent her. Um, I think it's the entire collection. And if it is the entire collection, that means this enzyme is in there. Um, so let's grab this and okay. Come on, Eddie B. There we go. So here we go. This is what we want. This is the, this is the T7 promoter. So I'm going to just grab it. We're going to go back over to here. Um, and should let me just paste that in. And now if I click off, it is exactly 65 bases long, which is exactly what we want. Wow, that is really cutting it close. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize how close that was going to be. Oh my god. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. I should have done that. I don't know why I didn't. I was I forgot that it was going to do that, and I yeah. Anyways. Um, anyway, um, wow, that is really freaking too close for comfort. Not gonna lie. Oh, okay. Um, so we're gonna create create annotation. We're gonna call this T seven promoter. Okay. So. So here's my here's my insane idea, and I'm gonna change this to a fun color. Let's call it red. Save. No, go back. Okay. So here's my crazy idea, right? I'm gonna go to my DNA company and I, or my DNA, my, the company I order from, and I'm gonna be like, make me these two pieces of DNA because there's two here. There's the top half and the bottom half, and I'll be like, make me these two pieces of DNA. Cool. And then I'm gonna take those two pieces of DNA and I'm gonna mix them in a tube so that they stick together, so I actually have a double-stranded piece of DNA. And the thing is, I don't care about a terminator because I don't need a terminator, I just need this to make RNA. I basically need, where the hell is it? I need T7, no, it's not the right one, it's this one. Um, I need T7 or T3 or whatever, it doesn't really matter. They're, I can use either of them, but I chose T7 because whatever. Um, so I'm gonna basically, I can make this, and if I had a pure vial of T7 like RNA polymerase, and I drop this in there with basically the RNA nucleotides. Um, it would make this. It would it would grab onto here, and it would just you know crank out millions and millions and millions and millions of copies of this in RNA, which is exactly what we want to be able to spray it on my plants. One problem. I need the letters. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the, the heads up um, about the, the U block. I should, I should do that. Um, okay, so, so in theory, if I, like, I, like I was saying, if I had a pure vial of T7 polymerase and this piece of DNA and all of the RNA letters, I should be able to just mix them and, you know, warm it up to, I mean, it, it might actually work at room temperature. I don't know. Um, but, you know, in theory, you could basically just run it or mix them, and it should just crank out millions of copies of this RNA, which I could then take and spray onto my plants, and in theory, it should kill off the virus. Fingers crossed. One problem. The letters. The actual RNA letters. I can't buy them right now. I mean, I mean, I can, but it's going to be really slow, and they're 
fucking expensive. Um, so normally, like, I've got tubes and tubes and tubes and tubes of DNTPs, which are the individual letters for doing DNA synthesis, but what I do not have are NTPs, which are all the letters for doing RNA synthesis. Technically. But the way I've been thinking about this is like, okay, well, I need RNA letters. So I can have this piece made. I can grow up. So I, I can take the plasmid from free genes, express it in an, some E. coli so that it's pr producing T7. I can collect all those bacterial cells pop them open, strain it out so that I've got basically an active solution of T7 polymerase, which would be really, which would be really cool. But now I need, so, and I could mix in, and I, you know, I could take that raw extract and I can mix in this piece of DNA and it should make RNA with one caveat being, I don't have the letters to fuel this reaction. Like I'm literally missing one of the components, but if only there was an enzyme, which I happen to have a vial of in my freezer, which could cut RNA, like complete RNA apart into the individual letters, that would solve my problem, wouldn't it? So, yeah, co see, co Cosmic Mutant is already onto this. Um, so basically my plan is I'm going to probably juice some spinach or something, like just something that's cheap and, and re re like readily available. Um, maybe one of my plants, you know, maybe some, some shiso, you know, put some shiso in a blender. Um, do a big RNA extraction. So extract out a, just a bunch of RNA out of some other organism, maybe baker's yeast, maybe some plant, whatever I happen to have lying around. So now I've got solution A, which is going to have my lysed bacteria that are going to have the T7 in it. We're going to have solution B, which is going to have this piece of this piece of DNA in it. And then we're going to have solution C, which is going to have, which is going to be a big RNA extract. I can then take that RNA extract, mix it with some RNAs, which should cut the, R, the, all the RNA in there into individual letters, which could then serve as fuel for um, the rest of this reaction. The problem is now I need to get rid of the RNAs, otherwise it'll destroy all of the stuff that I'm working so hard to make. So then I could take that, that now solution of RNAs and individual RNA letters, and I could mix it with a protease, um, which is a type of enzyme that basically destroys enzymes and other proteins. So if I mix the RNAs with a protease, it'll destroy the RNAs, and now the only thing left active is the protease. But unlike RNAs, protease can be turned off with heat. So I can now take solution C and heat it up and kill it. So there's nothing left active. The protease turns off, and so that all that's left is essentially a bunch of junk um, and a bunch of RNA letters. So now I've got solution A, which has my, my enzyme that I want, solution B that has my template, and solution C that has my letters. And I should be able to mix all three of them, and it should, in theory, crank out shitloads of RNA that target this stupid fucking virus. Um, um, no, it's not that I just need uracil. Um, it's that I need all of the individual actual letters. Like, the actual backbone is different, so I can't just use shredded DNA. I, have to, I actually have to use NTPs. Um... So, in theory, I could do that. I could make this solution. I could load it into a spray. I, then I could take the result of whatever that makes, basically. Um, and I could, if I really wanted, I could do like an RNA extraction. Excuse me. I, I could do an RNA extraction from that. Um, so I can purify it out and have like pure RNA. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'll just take that solution, mix it with some PEI, spray it onto my plants, and it should kill the damn virus. That, that's it. That's the whole plan. And, you know, if this targeting system doesn't work, um, I could just make a different targeting system because primers are fairly cheap. Like, I could have 10 of these made, and it would probably cost me 100, 120 bucks, um, which sounds like a lot, but if it means the difference between all of my plants are decimated and I have to basically chuck all of the soil and all of my vermiculite and all of my containers and restart all my plants, 
or I just make this weird goop and I spray all my plants and it makes them immune to this virus. That sounds pretty great. So yeah, that's my plan. Yeah, should. Should being the operative word to here. I have no idea if this is going to work. Um, but like I'm really leaning into my like pickle Rick instincts and I think this is going to work. Like it's, this is like it's just crazy enough that it just might work kind of thing. Um, uh, but yeah, so the only way that this wouldn't work is A, if, it's the, if I've been targeting the wrong virus, which would suck. Um, but I'm going to run the test, which, we, which was the first thing that we developed, like at the beginning of this. Um, I'm going to run this test, um, and we're going to see if it, that sets off the PCR reaction. If that sets off the PCR reaction, and I know that I'm targeting the right virus, I should be able to make my T TMV Doom cocktail, spray it on my plants, and it'll either make the plants commit seppuku, um because they're already infected and that's just what they do. Um, or it'll completely kill the virus's ability to spread and it should actually stop the virus. Or it'll make the virus mutate and then I'm fucked and I gotta start again. But um, yeah, that should do it. That's, that's my crazy plan. And I'm going to film all of this. <laughs> um, and if it works, then, you know, I'll, uh, I'll make a video about it. And... Uh, yeah, that's, that's my crazy, crazy plan. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm into it. What do you guys think? Am I insane? Probably. Do you think it'll work? Maybe. Um, I did not infect the plants. Well, I don't know if I infected the plants. If I infected the plants, then, I mean, whoops. But I did not go out of my way to infect my plants on purpose. This was something that just happened, and I'm I'm really upset about it, and I'm just trying to not have to completely restart all of my plants from scratch, because that would really suck, and basically bleach my entire apartment, because that's what I'm trying to avoid, essentially. Um, right? I mean, like... If the, even if this doesn't work, I mean, it's like, if it doesn't work, I'm back to plan A, which is throw out the plants and start from scratch and bleach everything. But if it does work, I save my plants and I don't need to throw them out and I get to keep my wonderful freaking peppers and I don't need to start from scratch again and I don't need to switch to hydroponics. And I, and like, I have an actual fucking method of dealing with this. And if this ever crops up again, or it's a different virus, I now have a system that I know works. And what's really great about this is I can just change this target costs like, like, so once I know, so if I, okay, if I do this and it works, which is a big if, admittedly, but if I do this and if it works um, and I get any other plant viruses ever again, I could just remake, like, I could just find a new target, which is, I mean, it's only like, you know, 19 letters long. You know, dig through the literature, find a new target, or just download the vir like the viral genome, design one myself. Um, you know, make a new one of these. It's it's you know this. I mean this. I mean, what's this going to cost? Let's go to Alpha DNA and see what their prices are. Um, so for twenty five nanomole, it is eighteen cents per base pair. Um, so I don't know what that is off the top of my head. 65 times 18, it, it's $11. So <laughs> considering I need two of them, it's going to cost me about 25 bucks to buy this. So 25 bucks worth of DNA, essentially no cost for the other enzymes because I'm growing them. Um, and RNAs, I have functionally infinite supply because I have like a gram or two of it and you need nanograms for it to work. Um, But yeah, that's, like, if I have any other viruses, it's a $20 fix, and I can just, you know, make, you know, whip up a quick batch of vaccine again, spray it down, call it a day. And, like, I don't even need the PEI, technically. I could just spray the plants with the pure RNA. The PEI just makes it more effective. Um, but yeah, so, I or I could inject it into the plant, and then I don't really need to worry about that. Or, I mean, there's all sorts of different ways that I could do it. But the, the point being, it's basically a $25 fix 
um, at my scale. Like if I was trying to do this at like crop scale, it would cost significantly more money. Um, and then you would actually want to take the time to do this differently. But because I'm only dealing with like an apartment's worth of plants and not like an entire monoculture crop, um, this is actually feasible, I think. I'm, I mean, I'm really, really leaning into my like crazy mad scientist-ness to try and make this work because I just don't want to throw my plants out. They're so pretty. I've spent so much time taking like very like delicate care of them and I just, I just want some fucking peppers. I just... <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so over viruses. I hate viruses. I, like... Ugh. Anyway. Um, it says, or you could cultivate virus-resistant strains of plants. I mean, yeah, technically, except they don't make a virus-resistant strain of habanada peppers. And, like, um, heirloom varieties of plants, which is what I tend to grow, also tend to be very not resistant to viruses, which is sort of a problem. Um, so, you know, then I'd have to deal with the thing. Um, if we were in a farmer's field, could they put this in the irrigation system? Yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, it, only if it's spray irrigation. If it's drip irrigation, it probably wouldn't work. Um, uh, people are like, you know, crazy scientists would be making it work with Corona. I mean, we don't talk about that because that's how you get demonetized. Um, or in jail. But, yeah, whatever. Um... Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. If this if if this works, those are going to be the best tasting peppers I will ever eat. Not even because they're necessarily very tasty, but because of the sheer amount of fucking effort that went into making them live. Um. Uh, yes, I am. I am growing growing the peppers from seed. Um. I mean, you're not, you're not supposed to mess with infectious things. And, like, I'm not messing with infectious things. I'm not, like, I didn't grow this on purpose. Like, this, like, it just happened. Like, I didn't do, like, I'm not going out of my way to cultivate this. It's just some asshole managed to get fucking viruses on my stupid plants. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. But, yeah, in, in Canada, you are not allowed to work with any, it, like, DNA is not regulated unless it produces something infectious or toxic, um, or, or like toxic to, to mammals um, and no animal work um, those are the things as long as it's not that you're allowed to make whatever you want as long as you don't like release it and like there's you know there's there's like protocols and laws you've got to follow but you're allowed to kind of do whatever you want um, and in this case I'm not making anything infectious I'm just making this tiny little bit of DNA which should in theory save my plants that's all I want I just want happy plants that's all I want I got two years of stress to look forward to. The least I can ask for is happy plants. But yeah, so that's my crazy ass plan. We've now done the design. I'm going to, I'm going to order this. <laughs> like I, I, I think this, I'm going to, I'm going to run this by, um, some of my, uh, plant friends and see what they think and make sure that I'm not stupid. Um, but yeah, in, in theory, this should work. <laughs> Is oatmeal real? Yeah. Yes. Obviously. Um, Uh, it says, how long will it take to make this thing? Because I think your plants will be dead by the time you're done. I mean, my plants are still growing. Like, the the virus is definitely starting to affect them a little bit, but, like, it hasn't caused any wilt. Like, it hasn't really... Like, of all of my eggplant plants, like, there's three or four of them in one pot. Um, one of them is showing no signs of virus yet. Um, so I think I've still got, like, at least a couple of weeks. So I'll have the primers to actually test this. So these guys, um, I'll have these by the end of the week because I'm going to put the order in tomorrow. Um, and um, this would also take two days to arrive. 
Um, I'm basically just waiting on these enzyme things to arrive. Um, they've already been ordered. Um, in theory, they're, I mean, they're already en route to um, my lab partner. And, it, it, you know, it, it's also dependent on whether or not all of these show up. Because I don't actually know what is being shipped to her. I know it's the open enzyme stuff. I don't know if it's the entire collection or if it's just a few specific things. Um, but if it is the entire collection and it does contain this, these RNA polymerases that I need, then I could probably crack this out in about two weeks of work. Um, it would mean I, I wouldn't be able to start working on this until like Friday or Saturday. Um, but a few days of consistent work and I could get this done. Um, so I could run that first PCR test. So like I'll, I'll do it in, I'm probably just going to, I'm going to order all four. So I'm going to order this top half, the bottom half, the forward primer and the reverse primer. I'm just going to order them all at once. If I don't end up using this, then whatever. Um, you know, it's 20 bucks down. Who cares? I mean, I care. Can't be stupid with money, but like, I'd rather have it and then not be able to use it than not have it and then have to wait. Um, so yeah. Uh, once everything arrives, what is the plan of action? Plan of action is step one, run the PCR reaction. If that comes out positive, immediately transfer to trying to make the vaccine, get it made as fast as physically possible, and then spray it on my plants. And the, the, the slow bit there is going to be dependent on what format the enzymes from the open enzyme thing come in. If it just comes as like pure DNA, which I don't think it is, I think it's already in bacteria. Um, but if it comes as pure DNA, then there's going to be like a, a three or four day lag of I need to put the DNA into some bacteria first. Um, and if they already come in bacteria, then that's easy. I just grow the bacteria, lice them and call it a day. Um, so that, you know, it's, it's, you know, a day worth of grow time or two days worth of grow time. Um, and for that, I would take all the yeast out of my incubator, which is the reason I normally keep it at 30 degrees. And that way I can crank it up to 37. So the bacteria would grow very fast. So I could grow just a shitload of the bacteria really, really quickly. Um, lice them. So I've got solution A. This would, these, this stuff will arrive in two days. Um, so I've got my solution B making the, RNA extract and then digesting it and then doing the protease and whatever like that's a one day thing so realistically this whole process would take about three like if I had all of the reagents and everything works on the first go which let's be honest it won't um, would take me about three or three or four days um, if everything goes goes tits up immediately then that'll get dragged out to about a week and a half or maybe my plants die before then and then all of this is moot but it was a very fun designing challenge and you know, if, if, even if these first batch of plants die and the rest of my plants get infected, then at the very least, I'll, th I'll have I'll have all this, you know, underway already. So that way I can treat the rest of my plants before they get infected. Um, I don't need a control group. I don't care about a control group. I'm not trying to do science. I just want my plants to not die. I'm not writing a paper. I'm just trying to save my plants. I don't care about, like, replicability. Although, of course, you know, I'm going to document everything, so of course it's going to be replicatable. But, like, I don't give a fuck about a control group. <laughs> like, I'm not going to purposely infect one of my other plants to just see if it works. Like, I just need it to work. Um... Um, also, again, this is this is sort of a vaccine, but it should also work on already infected plants in theory, um, because it should provide. I mean, the the virus is definitely going to interfere with the ability to, um, like like some of it will interfere with some of the cells' ability to do the thing, um, but in theory, there should be enough cells in there that are still functional and not infected with the virus yet. Um, to allow this to be possible or to be effective. But again, I have no idea. I'm making this up as I go. We'll see. So yeah, it is kind of an antiviral. I, we'll see. I mean, maybe. I don't know. 
Like, we're, we're just trying to use the plant's immune system to my benefit, and I don't know if it'll actually work, but we'll find out. We'll do a control group in the future. Again, I don't care. If somebody else wants to do a control group, they're welcome to. I just want to save two plants. If I can save my two plants, I'm happy. I don't care about a control group. I'll know that it worked because the virus will fuck off and the leaves will look normal again. <laughs> or the, the new leaves will look normal and they won't look all sad and the plant will actually grow and produce fruit. If I get to that point, it worked. That's my control group. Have you considered applying this to real crops rather than superfluous ones? Sugarcane industry is crippled right now by red rot. Red rot is a fungus. I believe. Let me check. Red, oh, red rot. Um, no, sugarcane. Disease caused by a fungus. This does this. Okay, this only works on viruses, guys. Like. If, if it's a fungus, it's a different problem. It's a concealed fun Oh, God, it's an ascomycete. Serious disease of sugar. Yeah, you don't... Fungus is hard. I just... <laughs> like... It's weird that... It, like, virus and fungus are both very, very difficult. Um, uh, what is the season for your plants? Like, the grow season. I, I mean, they're indoors, so I don't know if that matters or makes a difference because they're indoor plants um, um, is the immunity inheritable to your plants offspring no the immunity should only last like five days like I may have to respray the plants periodically just until that I, I know that I've like contained the infection yeah but that's the thing, I'm not trying to do, like, I mean, I'm doing science in the sense that, like, I have a hypothesis and I'm testing it, but, like, I'm not going for, like, a control group and, like, what is my p-value and make a nice graph. I don't give a fuck. I just want one thing to work just once. Just once I want a bio project to work on the first go. Um, but, yeah. What? NMPs, not NTPs. Really? Shit. Okay, well, then that's actually a problem. Um, hmm. Fuck. So, um, Tommaso Push makes a really important uh, thing that may throw a wrench into this, um, which is RNAs cuts uh, RNA into NMPs, not NTPs. So, let's just look this up, because I really should have checked this shit in advance. Um... Let me check. Um, shit. Oh, come on. Fuck you, Google. No, not Uriase, you fucking... Oh, man. Google autocorrect is just the worst. Um, oh, yeah, it's true. It would, it would make it into monophosphates, wouldn't it? And you really need the trif triphosphates. Huh. Okay, that is actually a problem. Uh, NTP triphosphates. Mm. Mm. Unknown. <sighs> NTP extraction. Let's see what we get. Uh, nope, that's not right. Tide. I mean, how do you, how do they make them? Nucleotide triphosphates extracted under... Oh, hello. I mean, here we go. This this is a... Uh, the degradation of nucleotide triphosphates extracted under boiling ethanol conditions is prevented by the yeast cellular matrix. Okay. Boiling ethanol extraction is frequently used method for metabolomics studies for biological samples. Um, including, okay, yes. However, the st stability of central carbon metabolites, including NTPs... Um, they degrade, basically. Um, hmm. 
Huh. Um. Hmm. Okay, well then I'm I so rather than doing the okay, well that that throws a wrench into my RNA's plan, but that's fine. I can just I mean the thing is like anything I pop open like should have NTPs in them. So I should be able to just like lice open a bunch of bacteria or something and it should just be full of NTPs, so it doesn't matter. So I can just do that. So I'll just, you know, do a separate extract, you know. So basically what okay, so new plan. Extract number 1 is going to be my T7 extract. Extract number two, I'm going to just grow normal bacteria, um, just grow a bunch of them, lice them open, filter it out, bing, bang, boom, I have my NTPs. It's not going to be as much. It's definitely going to mess with my yield, but whatever, that's fine. Um, it should still work. Is my phone ringing? I'm losing my mind. Uh... Maybe a little. Um, okay, anyways. Um, uh, won't you have too many other stuff by just opening bacteria? No, actually, it should just work. Um, because, so what, what, hmm. I could, so what I would want to do is I'd want to heat and activate the second solution. So basically, I'd have to pellet out the bacteria. So like grow, grow as big of a bacterial pellet as I can. Um, pellet them out. Um, lice them. Heat and activate them. So that, I mean, heat and activate basically just means put it at 65 degrees for an hour, hour and a half. Um, so, you know, I could heat and activate it. So that way, the only thing that's in there, because that's not boiling. Like, it's not going to bring it all the way up to boiling. So it should survive. Um, so it should leave the NTPs alone for the most part. Um, oh, here we go. Extraction of nucleoside, dye, and triphosphates from higher what? Higher plant tissues. There we go. That's exactly what we want, which is basically... So, maybe I won't use some bacteria. Maybe I'll use some spinach. Whatever. Point is, you pop a bunch of cells open with a fucking blender or whatever, um, and you end up with your NTP mix, essentially. Um, enzymatic determination, that's fine, don't care. Um, how do you, okay. Tissue was frozen in liquid nitrogen, lyophilized to complete dryness, pulverized into a fine powder. Um, okay, was compared with the, how did, how do you do the recovery though? PCA and how do, okay, the extraction protocol animal tissue, formic acid extraction. I don't know what PCA is. Uh, cold PCA. What is PCA? Chemicals. I should say PCA here. Where do you see PCA? But anyways, the, the point of this is that this is a solvable problem. Like the, the access to the NTPs is I think doable. Um, Show me PCA. Oh, here we go. Oh. PCA is... Wait. Ground cold PCA. It just... Why does it just call it PCA? Why would I know what PCA is? Extracted with PCA. Anyone know what PCA is? footnote oh thank you oh jesus perchloric acid that's no good <laughs> that's that's i don't have any of that um wait perchloric acid what's perchloric what is perchloric acid perchloric acid is a mineral acid okay production is oh duh it's, wow, that's really dangerous. Where the high aqueous solubility of sodium perchlorate. I do not have sodium perchlorate. I have sodium hypochlorite. 
Yeah, I don't have I don't have perchlorates. That's a problem. Okay, well, no, rip. Um, simultaneous and absolute quantification of nucleoside from human tissue. That's no good. Um, no, nope, don't want that. I just want at least I just want something simple. I mean, it it should just be a matter of just pop the cells open. I don't I don't need like pure nucleosides. Uh, okay, well, either way, I think I've got a game plan, which is, uh, so, okay, let's just do a quick review, and then I'm going to wrap it up for the day, because it's already late, and I've got a video to edit, and more Witcher 3 to play. Um, so, the wrap up. Um, basically, here's the plan. Plan is, I'm going to order this primer. This is the forward primer. I'm going to order this primer. This is the reverse primer. This should let me, and I need to see if I can find the paper, because I don't know if I left it open or not. Um, this one. There we go. Um, so I'm going to be able to, I, I'm going to order those primers. I'm going to do a tissue extract of my plants. And in theory, if it's the right virus, I should get a band of 880 base pairs on a gel after I run the PCR reaction. Okay. Okay. That'll tell me if I've got the right virus. If I've got the right virus, then I can have the, I'm gonna have already ordered this other part. So I'm gonna have this double-stranded bit of DNA made. Um, it's got the T7 promoter, it's got a targeting section, a loop, and a reverse complement. So basically, um, this is gonna be my, yeah, this is the thing that's gonna target the virus. I'm gonna use the enzyme from the open enzyme thing to turn this piece of DNA into RNA. And to do that, I'm gonna make two or three different extracts from different organisms. So one of them is gonna be expressing the weird enzyme that I need. One of them is gonna be basically the fuel and also all of the reagents that go into the reaction because bio is metal. And why go to the store and buy reagents when I can just like juice a bunch of bacteria? Um, oh yeah, so that should make a bunch of RNA the RNA will be single-stranded. It's going to be this part. This half is going to bend back on itself, so I've got a double-stranded bit of small interfering RNA, which is what we want. Then I can take that small interfering RNA, mix it with some PEI, which is polyethylene imine, and then spray it on my plants, save my plants. I get to be happy and eat a goddamn eggplant without having to worry about needing to bleach my entire apartment. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my plan. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's my plan. That's plant vaccines. Um, and so as just as a quick review, the way there's two ways to do plant vaccines. There's either this nonsense, um, or you can just basically spray the plants with a big chunk of RNA that's much larger than this, um, that will basically act just like a normal vaccine is, where it's but instead of it being like a chunk of the virus's shell, it's just a chunk of the virus's g genome and then the plant learns to recognize it. But yeah, that's my plan. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. This has been, this has been a lot of fun. I've been meaning to do this for a couple of days. I'm glad we finally figured out the issues with the stream. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, if you have suggestions for future episodes that are less ranty and less pre-planned, and for the, I mean, the usual episodes, we draw ideas out of a hat. If you have ideas to draw out of the hat, submit them to me on Twitter at who's gene, uh, like hashtag who's gene. Um, and if you want to follow along with the project before it ends up being turned into a video, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all those sorts of things, because I'll be posting updates. And if you haven't already, be sure to go to my second channel and subscribe, which is the Taste Emporium. There'll hopefully be a new video up on there maybe next week. It depends on whether or not I decide to actually film the cake I intend on baking in the next few days or not. Um, and yeah. That's my plan. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to call it there for the day. Um... This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this is that's it. That's that that's our show for the day. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any more questions because we already did a couple streams with questions and stuff earlier today. Um, even those those got taken down because they broke. 
Um, but yeah. Anyways, yeah, there's, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, you know, you know all the things. Like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. You know these things. Um, I hope you guys have a nice night. I, I hope you're staying safe and not being a COVID idiot. And, you know, don't lick doorknobs. And just be safe, be healthy. Try not to go too crazy with the, the lockdown and all that kind of stuff. And... Yeah, just have a good night, and we'll be back on Friday. Um, on Friday, we're going to have my buddy Gabriel on for another stream. Not sure what the topic is going to be yet, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a chat. It's going to be great, and I'll see you guys on Friday. <laughs>